Hello everybody. I thought I'd put together a little video on a common problem that uh, you might face when you're taking the FAA written knowledge exams. I know uh, I certainly ran across it. I've been taking a few of the FAA tests lately and my son will also be taking some so we had to get him all prepped up. And one of the common questions that comes up is what can you bring to the FAA knowledge test? And specifically, we were kind of worried about whether we could use an electronic E6B calculator. And some of the sites said you could, some said you couldn't, um, some said it was up to the proctor. And, uh, you know, that kind of left you with a couple of options. You could use the handy old, you know, mechanical E6B, or you could use your fingers and a pen and pa paper. Um, and that was about your only option. It would be really nice if you could bring a, an electronic E6B, because uh, that's probably what you studied with. And I know they're pretty invaluable on the tests. So uh, we, I wanted to clarify what was happening with that. And so uh, I know a lot of folks are going to be facing this as they take their first FAA test. And I thought I'd get into it for you. So what does the FAA say? Well, they have this uh, flyer, 6011C, about testing aids and what you can bring to uh, your test. And specifically, uh, it says you can have things like scales, straight edges, protractors, plotters. It does mention navigation computers, log sheets, and it does mention all models of aviation-oriented calculating devices that directly relate to the test. But later on, it actually goes into some details about, well, electronic calculators that have a memory you can't use. So does that allow or does that deny an electronic E6B? So there was a clarification later. Uh, this one was way back from 1999 when that circular came out. There was an update, uh, FAA Order 8080.6D. And what it actually did was clarified this part and it says and electronic or mechanical calculators that are directly related to the tests. Now it doesn't say which ones but um, there really only are two the uh, uh, ASA CX3 and Sporty's uh, handheld E6B that's electronic. So those are you know kind of the guidelines and this clarification from 8086D does allow you to bring those into the testing. So um, with that in mind, uh, you probably are going to want to bring your electronic E6B, but there's some good news. When I went to sign up for my last test, I noticed that there was an announcement on the PSI exams uh, website for the FAA. This was specific to FAA tests, I think. And the very first thing on the page says, PSI's test delivery platform now features a built-in enhanced aviation-oriented calculator available for use during any knowledge test. So that's good. Although it didn't really answer any questions about what that was. If you go to frequent ask questions or anything, uh, they did uh, point me to uh, this link right here, which is the FAA site for testing. And if you go take a look at the current uh, October advisory, it was also in the August, it has a little section down near the bottom that mentioned this particular calculator, the E6B aviation calculator. And it said it would be effective September 23rd, 2024. The PSI testing delivery platform features an enhanced aviation-oriented calculator, including an E6B computer, which will be available for use anytime during any knowledge test uh, administration event. So that was great news, uh, because if you didn't have an E6B and you wanted to use one, and for some reason they didn't allow it, then it would be nice to have it on the test itself. Now currently, uh, or previously, there is a little calculator button on these tests that you can pop up, but, would, but it was a simple four function, you know, 
plus, minus, divide, multiply, and that was about it. So it wasn't particularly useful other than to do your additions and multiplications and divisions. So that wasn't super helpful, but this, on the other hand, would be great. Now, on to the next part of the search. I actually called up PSI and asked them, hey, is there any information about this new E6B that the FAA says is on your site and that you say is on your site? I don't see anything about it in the FAQs or on the sample test that still uses the old calculator. So when I talked to their support team, they were actually unaware <laughs> that this was available on the FAA exams after September. So uh, they actually pointed me to a different hotline for Talogy, which is kind of the rebranded PSI. It's a, a larger company than just the PSI exams. And so they're the ones that are the actual support for the FAA exams. So the tech there didn't know that it, there was a new calculator, but they did dig into it and later got back to me and they talked to a developer. And the developer stated that they're actually using an emulated version of the CX3 flight computer from ASA and that they are gonna make that available on the test or it's already available. So I haven't confirmed that yet because I haven't taken my next test, but uh, that is a, a great option. They also sent me a link, which is up here above, um, to the uh, ASA page. It's onlineprepware.com, and this is the demo version of their CX3. And it's identical to the handheld one, uh, just in lock electronic form. Here's a picture of the website, and you literally get this calculator, and all of these buttons work, and all the functions up here work. Uh, the only thing you can't do is turn it off by holding this button. Uh, otherwise, it, you can scroll up and down. Uh, you can't use your keyboard on your computer, but you can use your mouse to click all of these buttons. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, when I started using it, it's like, hey, this is great. And this one actually has later, quote unquote, firmware than your handheld one. So uh, that was that was good news as well. So in case you're not familiar with the CX3 uh, flight computer, it's got all of these uh, functions, um, which is great. It's uh, pretty equivalent to the Sporties version. I think this one actually does a couple things that the other one didn't. For instance, it'll, it'll uh, tell you what the correct entry to a holding pattern is given what the hold is and uh, what your course is and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of neat. Um, and it has lots of other features as well, but uh, it's a pretty nice little computer. And if we have that available on the FAA test, that will be awesome. So I did go through the um, demo on the site just to grab a few screenshots. There are a couple of different functions. There's uh, flight functions, which are these two screens. Uh, there's a trip function, uh, which is... Uh, uh, this plan uh, button right here. The first, these first two were the flight buttons, flight button there. Uh, this last one is weight and balance over here. And there's also a timer function, a built-in calculator, and uh, you can convert units. Uh, you can do that one on the fly. It's not a separate screen. And then you can go into settings and change things like your theme and uh, you can build an aircraft profile for your particular aircraft so you don't have to put in those values and things like that. So it's very, uh, very useful. Um, and you can kind of take a look at these uh, features over here. Once you uh, scroll down to them, hit enter to go into them, and then you, uh, you can enter your data. So the two most popular E6Bs, I'm going to kind of get into this. Um, it's nice having the E6B in the FAA test, but I think you're going to want to have a backup. So um, these are the two most popular electronic ones, the um, CX3 from ASA and then the classic E6B from Sporties. And uh, they're essentially the same. As, as I said, there's a couple functions that are different between the two. Um, I personally found the interface 
on the CX-3 much more usable than the Sporties. While you get the same answer, um, the interface just looks nicer. Uh, it's not as complicated, you know, not as many buttons. And you can actually see what, for instance, um, what measurements you're using here. So you can say, say that this is knots and these are degrees or gallons or whatever you're doing. It. Um, and these, this is actually the same exact uh, calculation here. This is uh, for wind corrections. And I even plugged in the same numbers over here. And you can see that you get pretty similar numbers here. Uh, the problem is, okay, what uh, what is the wind speed in? Is that in knots? Is that in something else? Um, and these are never really labeled. Also, you have all of these functions down here, right? Which it's kind of hard to find things sometimes. And then when you want to say convert a something from like uh, statute miles to uh, nautical miles right here you'd have to hit convert and then hit this button with the right thing selected up here this one you already can see it and you just hit convert and then it'll cycle through the possible answers there this one also tells you you know which things are required and which things were calculated from once you entered these items uh, and it's just more readable so um, my preference is that um, the CX-3 is a much better interface than the old Sporties one. It either will calculate your stuff, but uh, I think the learning curve on the Sporties one is a little higher. Now I should note that uh, if you do take these into an FAA test, they will make you pull the batteries um, in front of the proctor to make sure that you um, erase any data that's stored in the E6B's memory. So um, be prepared to do that and to show them the batteries and that the E6B is off. Now, one advantage of the Sporties is it has a easy to get to battery uh, lid on the back and you just pop it off and pop the batteries out. Uh, the CX-3 is a little trickier. You have to pry off the back cover. Um, Got to get your fingernails under there and it's a little stubborn to get off. And then um, there's a bunch of snap points around the edge so there's like six of them, I think. It's a much trickier to get the batteries into and out of, but other than that, uh, it's great. Uh, one other tip, of course, is um, make sure you have fresh batteries before your test. You don't want to run out in the middle. Although if the CX-3 is really available um, in virtual form on the test, that would uh, make things much simpler. So you also have the uh, option besides the electronic versions, obviously, you could go with the classic uh, round slide rule type. Um, this is a, uh, a metal one. There's also paper ones. Um, some of them just have the circular part. Uh, these are awesome for calculating, say, uh, wind components and wind directions and corrections and things like that. I always found um, when I was first learning it that it was kind of hard to figure out which number went with what, and you also have to think, do things like drop the zeros, which you don't have to do with these other two. And you can get a much more precise answer with these. These are ballpark figures usually, um, which is usually good enough if you're just flying along, but if you're answering a very specific question, these are, are probably more useful. And uh, finally, uh, just a, a few other thoughts. Um, definitely practice with these tools, whether it's the electronic version or the online version or the mechanical version. And you'll, you'll find that it will be much uh, easier on the test. You don't wanna learn how to use these devices when you first get to the test and you have all the other pressure and you have a time constraint. So make sure you're familiar with the tools before you get there. Um, this video wasn't intended as a guide on how to use these, just some comparisons and some opinions that I formed while I was uh, practicing for, for the test. And, um, and when I finally went to the test and found out what was available, these things were uh, very handy. Now, a lot of the information that you could calculate through these uh, flight computers are available in the test supplement in the form of uh, charts. 
and graphs. So you could do things like density altitude and computing your landing distance and things like that via the charts, weight and balance. Uh, some of the things are actually easier through the charts and some things are easier through the uh, flight computer. So it's uh, all up to you. You have a, a few resources. Um, one tip I would get, give you is um, get the test supplement um, before you take the test and familiarize yourself with it. There's a lot of information in that test supplement that you can actually utilize on other test questions like the uh, the legend for the uh, sectional map is at the beginning and things like that for, for the private pilot and uh, there's a huge appendix for the instrument and that kind of stuff. Now, one, one last thought, um, if you're here for the FAA test, but it's not for a pilot, maybe it's a uh, mechanic, uh, your aircraft maintenance or parachute rigger, I think you uh, will still get the built-in uh, E6B calculator. So um, folks can comment um, in the comment section of this video if they've taken the test after September 23rd. And let me know if uh, you actually took a look at the built-in calculator and let me know if it really is the CX3 um, emulation or if it was still the old style four function calculator. So I'd be curious to see. So I look forward to your comments and I hope this was helpful for the folks that haven't uh, actually taken the test yet but are planning to and hopefully it asked or answered a few of the questions that you had. Thank you.